Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great weekend. I just wanted to hop on and share with you some book recommendations for quarter three of Historathon 2023. So Historathon 2023 is a year-long reading event created by Vin over at Revenant Reads. And this, this booktube event um, is really just about focusing on nonfiction um, history and uh, just trying to instill or um, share a love of, of past events. So Q3, um, if I haven't mentioned it yet, focuses on the years 1500 to 1820. So in Q1 and Q2, I was very much um, involved. Uh, I, I am very passionate about prehistory, um, so Q1, and I'm, I'm also um, an avid fan of the Middle Ages, um, particularly the high and, and late Middle Ages in England and France. So Q1 and Q2 were really, um, were really exciting to me. Um, from Q3 onwards, it will very much be a learning experience for me because as I say, most of my um, historical interests lie in earlier time periods. So I am looking forward to Q3 and Q4 just to learn more about um, events post-1500. Having said that, I am a fan of um, the development and the, the, the historical development of um, our understanding or, or the Western understanding of, of witchcraft, witch hysteria, um, uh, the the phenomena that that we know as as um the witch in in the western world um so i do have a few book recommendations here for if if that topic is of interest to anyone um and the first book that i've got is maleficium by gordon napier um i read this a few years ago and i um while i did have there were some things that i i found that were worthy of critique um criticism i should say um, I think overall this is a good introduction if, if you're not familiar with um, the historical development of, of witchcraft in the West um, or witch hunting. So um, he really focuses on the development of witch hunting um, as, as an offshoot or um, really being birthed from um, heresy. Uh, so before the late Middle Ages, the Catholic Church wasn't necessarily concerned or wanting to, or, or necessarily focusing its efforts on stamping out witchcraft or um, magical acts. Um, it wasn't really until the late Middle Ages, after um, certain heretical sects were seen uh, as, or being accused of committing diabolical acts or um committing uh you know paying homage to satan and and uh you know this the the sabbath um it it wasn't until that point that the church got involved because then it was seen as as witchcraft was then seen as heresy so the church got involved and was involved in inquisition against witches um and some of the methods of of torture and gaining confessions out of um heretics were then applied to witches or people accused of, of witchcraft. Um, so while this book does start off in the uh, late Middle Ages, um, I think a lot of this book focuses on the uh, 16th, 17th, and 18th century. So um, this, is, this is a good book for this time period for Q3, um, if you are interested in learning more about um, the development of witch hunting. Another book, uh, which I read last year, um, this is The Witches by Stacey Schiff. Um, I enjoyed this. I much preferred Stacey, Sh Stacey Schiff's biography on Cleopatra. I think there was a lot of tangent in this book, which detracted from the overall narrative. Um, and I often was thinking, oh, where are we going with this? But I think what Stacey was doing, um, these tangents, uh, go very much into the background of the neighbors and, and the community members in Salem. Um, so it's painting a, a picture of, of everyone in the village. Um, so you get an understanding of, of who is not, you know, who might be of a more vulnerable background um, and more liable to, to being accused of witchcraft, but also the feuds between families. 
um, that that lived in in Salem. So you could almost see that while um, while yes, the, the the people that you would generally assume of being accused of witchcraft, uh, so those those individuals who um, are uh, a bit more vulnerable. Um, not necessarily of, of good financial means or um, um, be uh, being viewed as, as socially acceptable, but also perhaps some of these accusations could have been uh, malicious and uh, could, uh, could have been developed or, I don't know, uh, been the result of, of these family feuds. But anyways, sorry, I'm rambling on. Um, so yeah, so I think while maybe the structure could have been a bit better, um, I think this book is, is still great if you're wanting to learn about um, one of one of the most famous events in, in North American history, uh, the Salem witch, uh, witch trials. Um, and then while this isn't, this book here, um, I am deviating from Historathon here uh, because this this book doesn't necessarily just focus on on uh, the 1500s onwards. Um, but if you are interested in learning more about um, the understanding of of the witch, um, the witch by Ronald Hutton is a really great book. It doesn't just focus on the Western understanding of of the witch, um, but it it's like a very good anthropological. Um, study of of witchcraft um through ancient times um across different geographical space so mesopotamia um egypt africa uh, other places in africa um but uh, of course britain as well um but how all of these all of these um different ideas uh emerged um so that our western understanding um what what the modern understanding i should say not just the western understanding because there's um different understandings even to this day um how it emerged to to, to the modern understanding of, of witchcraft uh, which is across the world again i'm rambling so apologies but yes if you are interested in learning more about witches um this is a great book um so those are the ones that I wanted to share with you if um, that particular area takes your fancy. But two of the books that I am definitely going to read for um, quarter three are both by an author called Pekka Hamalainen. Um, the first is an audiobook, and I can't share it with you because my towel is dead, so I'm not very prepared. <laughs> uh, but the first one is an audiobook that I started in January and I haven't finished, um, so I casually DNF'd it, I suppose. But I want to come back to it, and that is uh, the Lakota. Um, and again, I think I had to stop this because it's very detailed. Uh, but I think audiobook format is probably not the best format for something that is so detailed. At least not for me, anyways. Because when I listen to an audiobook, I tend to be going to and from work or you know doing chores around the house, and uh, my mind wanders a lot. <laughs> um, so I, I do need to sit down with this again and give it another go. And then the second book, which isn't an audiobook, it's an ebook um, by the same author, is on the Comanche. So again, while the breadth of history for the Lakota and Comanche isn't, you can't just fit it into this time period for um, Q3. I do think um, the bulk of the book, um, which focuses uh, post contact with European settlers, um, does. So I think I think I can safely fit these into this uh, this quarter. Um, so yeah, my my pile of possibilities for Q3 is still very much a work in progress. Uh, I do want to read some books on post-contact um, South America and Mesoamerica. I would like to read more about the Revolutionary War um, and perhaps some other time periods in different geographic geographical areas out, outside of North America and, and Europe. But um, again we'll see <laughs> so anyways my next videos will probably be uh what i read in q2 um also some books that i want to read for other reading events not just historathon um and just what i've been up to the past couple of months because again i've, I've been miss mia so apologies for that uh but i do intend to be back on a bit more 
So anyways, have a very happy Independence Day if you're celebrating next week. And otherwise, um, just have a fabulous week. Uh, and I will see you next time. Bye.